Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to dive into it. I know everybody has so much to do with the way the world is right now. Um, uh, I just want to point out it's been incredible uh, to see the way entrepreneurs are pulling together and helping each other right now. Um, there are new opportunities that were never available uh, a few weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of obstacles ahead, um, but we're seeing amazing things happening. Um, mem members helping each other. Uh, really quick before we dive in, I want to mention on Tuesday, we're, we're going to keep putting these town hall meetings together to help you in any way we can. Uh, make a note, uh, Tuesday, 1030 Eastern, we have uh, one of the top experts in the world on how to get thinking more resourcefully, uh, an expert on uh, new ways that are available to fund your business because of this coronavirus. And we'll be giving you more information uh, as we get, get that sorted out for uh, Tuesday at 1030. I'm going to dive right into it and introduce uh, our first uh, guest expert, um, Chris Buskey. He is the CEO of the Infectious Diseases Society of America. Um, and as you can imagine, he is in the heart of all of what's going on. Um, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you to share um, your insights and, and information uh, that you have access to and take it from here. Great. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, so thank you again for the opportunity to share some really important information about the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I'd like to start with a caveat that I am not a physician, but, uh, but I do work with over 12,000 of the smartest physicians in the world who treat infectious diseases. Uh, the Infectious Diseases Society is an international nonprofit medical society and we represent clinicians that first treat patients, but we also represent scientists who develop diagnostic tests and vaccines. So I wanna spend just a couple minutes talking about what we do know about the coronavirus. And first, maybe some statistics. We know that uh, as of today, there's over 480,000 people around the world who have been infected with the virus, and over 22,000, unfortunately, have died. Uh, in the U.S. alone, there are 69,000 cases and over 1,000 deaths. We also know that in the United States, uh, we've just begun to see a spike in some cases that will last still for several more weeks and maybe in other areas, maybe even months. So I think we all need to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we know now that the coronavirus is at least 10 times more deadly and two to three times more infectious than the typical seasonal flu. Uh, we also know, and I think you've seen this through the coronavirus task force that the White House has put together, that our uh, the global health surveillance and public health agencies in the US are grossly underfunded. The CDC truly needs billions more annually to build an effective global and local for surveillance system and infrastructure before the next pandemic hits, and the NIH needs billions more annually to develop antiviral drugs and vaccines. Uh, this next point is really important. We know that physical distancing works and that it will need to be sustained for many more weeks to slow the rate of infection. Uh, case in point here recently, you all may have seen that the cor coronavirus cases in Louisiana jumped from just a few hundred to almost 1,800 in one week's time. And it's no coincidence that this is happening a few weeks after Mardi Gras. So there are some reports that New Orleans could become uh, the next epicenter for the virus in the United States. Uh, I was on a call yesterday with a group of CEOs, and, and one comment in particular struck me that I'd like to share, and it really talks about individuals that are dealing with four primary stresses right now. The first was, you know, concerns about your personal health and the health of your loved ones. Uh, the second is what, what, what was termed social stress, so it's really the concerns about physical distancing and, and isolation that we're all dealing with. The third is kind of the short-term economic stress, or how am I going to pay my bills this month? And last is the long-term economic stress, or what happens to my job or the job of family members and friends if the coronavirus impacts the country for many more months to come, or maybe even the next couple of years if we fall into a recession. So my last comment 
for uh, that, that's for CEOs, you know, you play a really important role here. Many industries have proven that they can continue to function at a high level while practicing physical distancing, which is something that the Infectious Diseases Society of America feels very strongly should be maintained. It's really going to take uh, innovative thinking and new models for customer engagement to push us through this crisis. So with that, um, I'll stop and I'm happy to take any questions that folks have. Great. So if you guys have some questions, one question I want to ask before we dive into to the CEO's questions is, and we, we definitely know a lot of the scary news and the bad news. Anything that we could be optimistic about, any good news that you're seeing? Uh, yeah, so I, I think um, it, maybe this is not from a medical perspective, but you know the the bill that that is going to be signed here, hopefully by the president uh, today or tomorrow, provides tremendous resources to really jump re jump start the economy. You know, we saw I can't remember exactly what the number was. You know, three million of unemployment claims uh, for the for this past week. Um, I think we're trying to get people back to work quickly, and I think this bill will. Uh, incentivize companies to uh, quickly rehire um, folks and get them back on the payroll and know that there's an opportunity for people to uh, to get back to work in, in a lot of industries. We understand, you know, there still be many industries that will be hurt by this, but uh, I think that's from, from kind of the non-medical perspective. From a medical perspective, uh, you've seen it from Dr. Uh, Tony Fauci and others that there is a significant effort now. There's somewhere in the nature of about 70 different clinical trials that are uh, that have been started to look for uh, vaccines and therapies uh, to really attack this coronavirus. And the ability of people really around the world to start these clinical trials in such a, a rapid pace uh, shows a lot of promise. Uh, I don't think we, we we don't want to be overly optimistic because literally every one of those trials could fail, but the odds of that are pretty low. Uh, it's still going to probably take us a good year to to ensure the the safety of uh, all of the different therapies that uh, will eventually maybe lead to a vaccine. Right. And so, if you guys want to ask any questions related to coronavirus. Um, infectious disease, go ahead and type it in. And while we're waiting for, for any questions to come in, um, one question I have is what's a common misconception? So I, I think a common misconception, um, and thankfully we've heard about this a lot on the news, is that you can still be infectious uh, with the virus uh, without having any symptoms whatsoever. So, you know, you've got um, people young and old that feel fine, that are walking around the community that are potentially infecting uh, many other people. And the research has shown that, again, this is two, kind of two to three times more infectious than the flu. So if I have it, I'm asymptomatic, and I infect three people, and then they infect three people, and so on, you can see how exponentially that can grow in the community. And that's exactly what we saw in uh, New York. I think we're starting now to see it in New Orleans, where you've got big groups of people together, um, and unfortunately, uh, many of them are infecting each other and not even knowing it. So mm -hmm. really, physical distancing is, is still critically important right now. Right. Yeah, it, wearing a mask even if even if you feel fine when you go in, out to some places. Um, there's no crystal ball, nobody knows, but I don't know if you have any inside information as far as what a best guess is, is how long till it's more normal. I mean, obviously it depends on the different parts of the country, but are you hearing anything? I know the goal is is in some parts to be opening for business by Easter, but um, are you hearing anything as far as how that might move or what to expect there? Right, so I, I think what's gonna be important and, and maybe your your next speaker here will, will kind of talk to this is, I'm not sure what the old normal looks like anymore. 
we, we might be looking at a, a very different world moving forward, you know, regardless of whether we move into a recession or not. But, you know, I, I think from a positive perspective, it's proven that um, businesses can still function with no one physically in the office, right? Uh, many businesses can still function that way. So uh, there's been a lot of kind of hesitation for remote workers, teleworkers. Well, I, I think at least here in the United States, people have been able to step up. My, my organization has 60 staff. Uh, we didn't miss a second of work. You know, we've been working around the clock remotely, every every one of us. So um, it's it's really thinking about how to work differently. Um, you know, it, I don't think anyone can kind of guess what this looks like, but there is, at least within the infectious diseases community, some concern that if we start to loosen the guidelines around physical distancing, that there could be this kind of next wave that mm -hmm. happens. Because again, if you open up certain parts of the country and with air travel, car travel, people can move quickly from New York to Nebraska or Iowa or wherever, you know, we claim that, you know, there's there's not the community spread like there are in large urban areas. And that could quickly in, reinfect those communities. So um, we're, we're kind of playing without a playbook right now. Uh, that's all theory, um, but that's something that, that our physicians and scientists are concerned about. Got it. Gentlemen, we have a couple of questions in here that I can throw your way, Chris. Great. Uh, Chris asks, is there any data supporting that once you get it in recovery, you will not be able to get it again? So there is uh, some data coming out of China right now that uh, that is being analyzed. I don't, I don't believe there is any uh, definitive truth to that but there is a movement right now to collect the uh, to collect blood from individuals that have recovered from the coronavirus um, to look at if potentially um, allowing some of that blood into um, to people as uh, kind of a precursor to a vaccine, as an example, to introduce antibodies to to, end it, to healthy individuals. Um, but that's a study that's just getting started here in the United States, and I think they're doing some of that work in in China and maybe South Korea. So there there is no definitive evidence that you cannot, um, you know, acquire the the virus again uh, at this point. Right. Vincent asks, your society and our company have been saying this would happen for many years. How can we keep the momentum going after this one dies? Right. So, you know, great question. I think this is part of the role of the Infectious Diseases Society. We work hand in hand with the CDC, with NIH, uh, with the FDA. Uh, you know, we've been talking for you know, literally decades that um, specifically, the United States just does not fund um, surveillance and public health appropriately. When you look at uh, Seattle as a perfect example, their public health department was overwhelmed uh, the first day that uh, the outbreak happened up there and their long-term care facilities. Uh, across the United States and really around the world, there are not enough infectious disease physicians probably most people on this call aren't aware that infectious disease physicians are about the lowest paid physicians uh, in the entire pay scale of medical specialty societies. And part of the reason why is the way that physicians in general are reimbursed. Um, surgeons and others that um, perform a procedure, uh, heart surgeries, transplant, whatnot, are reimbursed at a much higher rate than infectious disease physicians who don't don't perform any procedure. They use their minds to question patients and to come up with uh, with solutions for uh, for uh, therapy. So I think it's it's all of our responsibilities to inform decision makers, regulators, legislators about the need to truly prepare for uh, the next pandemic, and there will be one. Got it. Thank you for that. And uh, Jared, did we have Brad here and ready to? 
Can you give it? Yeah, just a second. We're just having some connection issues on that. So okay. I'll get them. You have time oh. for another question while he's getting set up? Sure. Yeah, let me, let's see here. Um, Spencer asks, if we have a product that can help stop, slow the spread of the virus, who can we talk to about this? How do we contact the government? Uh, so, you know, what I would say is uh, maybe, Jeff, if you want to share my information with the attendees here, I might be able to uh, shepherd that along to the appropriate uh, agency. Great. Thank you. I will do that. What should I share? Which information? Uh, you can share my uh, my email address with the group, okay. my work email address. Got it. All right, and Jerry, you let me know whenever. Yeah, Brad, can you hear us? I got you, got you loud and clear. Excellent. Great, well, I'll go ahead and introduce Brad. Then Chris, thank you so much. I know he mentioned he's been in hundreds, literally hundreds of uh, interviews uh, up there in Washington over the last few days. And so I really appreciate it. It means a lot that you took the time to, to share the in insights and answer a few questions. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Great. And oh, and uh, next up, we have best-selling author um, in several ways, quite literally the number one business coach in the world. Um, he owns dozens of companies. Uh, just one of them has a thousand offices in 75 countries. And uh, he's uh, like, like a lot of us is, is navigated through some crises over the years and in today he's going to talk about what to do in a crisis specifically we are when brad i'm going to turn it over to you thank you so much for doing this hey buddy how you doing uh good to be with everyone sorry i just had to get off another presentation i've been cranking these out working from the home office like most people are these days so uh i'm going to go to share my screen and uh go straight on to this uh, because i think it's important that uh everyone sees what we're doing here. So I'll turn off the webcam and go to the screen. So. All righty. So there's two things we're going to do today. I'm going to go through quickly what I presented uh, two weeks ago to people in, in business. And then I'm going to go through what I presented yesterday, because I think it's important to see the distinct difference between two weeks ago and today. Um, and, and I'm not going to talk about the actual pandemic. All I'm going to talk about is the uh, um, uh, business side of this. Now, to give people an idea, uh, as Jeff mentioned, I have nine companies uh, and all bar one of them, we've pivoted strongly uh, and moved and got them making money during this time. So I, I always talk about this as a survive and thrive. Um, first phase is to get yourself into survival mode. So finding out what it is that needs to happen for you to survive and making sure the business survives through it all. And the second phase is uh, getting the business into thrive mode again. Um, if I can just quickly go through. So 11 days or sorry, now actually two weeks ago when I first presented on this, this is what I came out. So when I saw this coming down the pipe, um, I, I jumped on there and made sure that everyone understood what to do straight away. So some of these things may still be relevant for some people on here and may not. Um, communication. In times of crisis, your communication must be 5, 10, 15, 20 times more than the level of communication you're used to and the level of communication that you normally do. So you've got to make sure that you are the leader. You're seen to be the leader. You're out front doing that communication. Um, very simply put, if you're not in communication with your team at least two, three times a day, you need to step it up to that, okay? If you haven't done personal phone calls to your team, make sure you do that. Um, second thing is that, you know, every, every crisis brings opportunity. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, you know, never let a good crisis go unused or something along those lines. And... Uh, most people in this crisis is, are seeing it as that. They're seeing it as a crisis. Whereas, you know, in one of our businesses, which is completely shut down, it's a restaurant in the Wynn Casino. We're, we're shut. We're just, we have no option but to shut. So instead of seeing it as shut down, we say, okay, our business is now in planning mode. Our business is in uh, rehearsal mode. Our business is in reinvention mode. What are we going to do to come out of this thing? Because 
a lot of people are sitting around waiting for this and they're thinking, oh, look, I can't wait for it to get back to normal. No, no, this is the new normal. So stop thinking that, start thinking about differentiators. Third thing I took people through was that um, uh, every economic cycle has a fall and a winter, okay? The challenge in 2008, and this is my fourth economic downturn I've had to run businesses through. The challenge of 2008 is that everyone debated the downturn and it, it, they almost debated it for a year. And we didn't know that the downturn and people were like, oh, maybe it is, maybe it's not, you know. And so people acted very slowly. This one, you know, it's a downturn. Uh, you know what's going to happen. And boom, all of a sudden the fall is here. Now, is the fall finished? I'm not certain just yet. Um, and, and by the end of the week, however, that being said, when I get to my next set of slides, you'll understand the distinction between two weeks ago and today as to where I'm at. But we got to be ready for winter. It's going to be a lot shorter fall and a lot shorter winter than 08 obviously was because this is an external cause, not a financial cause into this one. Most cycles are seven to 10 years. We ran, like if you take a look at it through, through the, the economic summer up until 2020, we were running economic summer for at least five, six years. I mean, we, we had great times running through. Um, the, the other thing I taught two weeks ago is that you have to understand that you're going to change. You must change. You can't not change. And so too many people are waiting and thinking, oh, I don't need to change yet. I don't need to do that sort of stuff. My formula in there for change, D times V plus F has to be greater than R. That's dissatisfaction times vision plus first steps has to be greater than resistance. In most times, getting people to change is a challenge. In most times, getting people to shift and change is hard work. Right now, your employees are willing to change on a dime. Right now, your customers are willing to change on a dime. Everyone's willing to change right now, so be aware of that fact. But just because dissatisfaction high doesn't mean the vision doesn't need to be there. You've got to look at where your vision is. Now, uh, two of our companies, we've had to change the entire business, like not just change one piece of it, but change the entire business because like that business is dead, okay? That business is now dead. What are we going to do instead? Um, we've got this set of skills. We've got this group of people. If we want to keep going, we just got to be doing something entirely different. So what are we going to sell now? You know, and, and you sit back and you look at it, and you think two weeks ago or even a month ago, there is zero chance that anyone on our team would have ever thought that we were going to be pivoting and changing to that degree. But guess what? We are. So congratulations. <laughs> this is your new job. And uh, I think people are happy to just have a job at this point in time. So you know, it's it's one of those things that we've got to look for time and time again. Um, two weeks ago, I was saying you got to cut back and stop your spending and renegotiate stuff and, and slow down any big spending, postpone any big spending. Now, you know, very clearly, and again, I'll get to it. You'll see what I, where I'm at in two weeks' time. The thing, though, that has to happen is you've got to keep selling your way through this thing. You can't slow down on the marketing aspect. You've got to find a way to pivot your marketing, change your marketing, do something with your marketing so that it actually gets results. And we'll get to more of that in a second. Uh, two weeks ago and still today, get your credit out there, okay? So hang on, let me go back to that. Get credit up as much as you can. The government programs that are out there now, get the applications in yesterday. You know, you're gonna have to be doing most of those applications at midnight and 2 a.m. because their servers are crashing all day, every day. We got one of our companies in at uh, like two days, three days ago. It was at 12.45 a.m., so almost 1 a.m. We got one of the applications in. These SBA loans, they take a while to do, but you've got to get them in there. You've got to do it. Getting extra credit cards and extending credit lines is vital two weeks ago because we didn't know where the market was going. Um, two weeks ago, I said... Uh, very clearly, if you're going to do staff cutbacks, get rid of them all in one go. Um, suspend any bonus programs and be uh, and talk to your staff about them having a willingness to say, listen, we're going to have a few options. One of them is to lay people off. Another one is to give people uh, pay cuts as a group that we take, you know, 60 percent of income for the next little while or something along those lines. And if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. And, and you have to have those conversations with people before it comes time to do it so that they are prepared for this. And, you know, we even told our staff, listen, you, you want to be extending your own credit if you can. You want to be doing that so you can get through this stuff. Don't take this lightly. Um, then we went into uh, two weeks ago. We knew it was coming that you've got to be uh, you got to be virtual. 
the, the virus is making us virtual. And so, you know, if you're not by then, you need now. Now, VPNs are crashing all over the place. The level of uh, email and, and uh, cyber attacks right now globally is so massive, it's not funny. So everything technology-wise is going to be it's going to be slowing down. The fact that GoToWebinar and Zoom and these guys and, and Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams got in, in seven days last week had 12 million new users added in seven days. You know, this stuff is going crazy right now, but you've got to be able to be thinking about everything running from home for a week, a month. I'm guessing, and I'll tell you when I get to the next one, um, you know, everything going online from customers to buying from you to deliveries to everything. Um, if I can say that this is the biggest opportunity that we've ever seen, it, it, you, you, it's crazy that people are not seeing it that way. I see too many people seeing this as a disaster rather than the biggest opportunity to have come our way. Um, I, I sat down and looked at repurposing people in one of our companies. Like one of our companies is a food truck business and our food trucks this is the time for us because spring is like every festival and all this stuff. And this is where we make 60% of our revenue and boom, gone. Every festival's canceled. So it's like, okay, what do we do now? Uh, we had to pivot. We had to change. And we went to value family meals and we've got everything running and we're still paying everyone's wages. In fact, we had to hire two new people the other day, which is phenomenal that we've pivoted so strongly that we've gotten through survive and now we're into thrive. So Keep keep pivoting and that sort of stuff. Um, all these things from two weeks ago where we said that uh, you've got to be looking at it. So uh, marketing, you've got to find the marketing methodology for today. And we'll get to more of that in the new one. But uh, the five ways formula, that's my formula. If you don't know that one, uh, I'll, I'll just, what's the easiest way? Um, jump on my YouTube channel or just jump on YouTube, type in Brad Sugar's five ways. Uh, it'll teach you my formulaic methodology for multiplying business profits um, and and looking at that. You've got to know your numbers and be working your numbers right now. But right now is not a time to cut marketing. Right now is a time to increase marketing, but be done in a different way. And again, we'll get to more of that. Uh, two weeks ago, I was telling everyone that if you're not looking to your 20% of your customers who bring you 80% of your business, you're going to go crazy. You need to be looking at those 20% and saying, okay, how do I get these 20% actually uh, staying with me? How do I get them uh, shored up? Make sure these. Now, by the way, you have some customers who are doing much better. Some clients out there doing much better. I was chatting with one of our clients yesterday. He's in the conveyor belt business and they uh, do a lot of the servicing for the conveyor belts. And so their level of work has quadrupled. It's, uh, FedEx, UPS, uh, Amazon, these are all their customers. These guys are going through the roof. They're employing people hand over fist because they're in uh, the, the, all of the conveyor belts in all of the places there, they're like, no, we want someone on site. If anything goes down, we want someone on site right now to fix everything. We want everything serviced every day, not every week anymore, because we cannot have a breakdown on this stuff. So when you're looking at it, some of your customers there. So what we've gone to a few of our clients and said is, listen, go to your best customers who are doing well and ask them to pay for the next year up front. You know, get that money coming in. Don't don't wait and don't hold back on this sort of thing. Uh, and then finally, uh, two weeks ago, it was very simple. You know, it's it's be nice. You know, in line, stay in line, be nice, be good to people, all that sort of stuff. Thank God we've gotten through the whole crazy toilet paper phase. So that was two weeks ago. Let me flick it out then and go to where I am at now. Okay. Um, so in the updated version of what I'm teaching today, this is what I want to get to, to the next little while, and then I'll get to questions time at the end. So positive communication. Um, you've got to be in your communication today as a leader. You've got to be the positive, strong, passionate. You must be that person out in front. If you are in any way, shape, or form a negative in this time, your people are going to feel it. Your people are going to see it. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse for you. Now, yes, there's tough stuff coming. Yes, it's survival mode for many businesses. And maybe then we can get to thrive. But you've got to be positive in every single communication piece you do. You've got to be strong. You've got to be that person who's there uh, for your people, making sure that they know that you've got their back, that you're doing everything you can to do this stuff. 
and you got to communicate with them that, hey, we finally got the uh, the SBA loan thing through. Hey, we got the this one. Because, you know, when you look at it, all of the different programs out there, the, the Amazon, the Facebook, all of these companies that are putting money out, you know, the details coming through yesterday for, for what we're seeing, the SBA loans are going to forgive rent and wages and stuff like that. You know, the, the fact that we don't have to pay taxes for the next 90 days and especially employee tax, all this stuff. There's some great things, but you got to communicate that to your people. Once you learn it and you see it, you got to communicate all of this stuff to your people so that they feel strong and they feel good about it. Your, your, your employees have got to feel good. Now, the pivot factor in, in business right now, back to that formula for change. I want to teach it to you slightly differently than what I was teaching two weeks ago. Now, the formula for change, now that we know what is happening. See, two weeks ago, we didn't know what was going on. We knew that there was going to be a panic in the streets. We knew there was a disease. We knew where it was coming. Now we know we're on lockdown for at least 30 days. We know that this is happening. We know that, that, that everyone's got to work from home. We know, we know, we know, we know. There's so much more we know today than what we knew two weeks ago that now we can go about change in a positive manner. Really what we're seeing here is a speeding up of the change that was going to have to happen for many businesses anyway. We're seeing a speeding up of it right now. Now, when I say small pivots, what I'm trying to get all of our clients and all of my businesses to do is unless we have to, we're not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater type thing. Unless we absolutely have to, we're trying to do a hundred small pivots rather than one massive just change the whole dang thing. Um, oh, thanks, team, for putting in the uh, YouTube thing in there. That's great. Appreciate it. So when we sit down and take a look at the, the tiny little pivots, it's a tiny marketing, shift that marketing, change the languaging in your sales approach there, change the languaging in this, look for the opportunity in this sort of stuff. You know, when I look at where in our industries and each of our businesses, like our cleaning business, we had to pivot the cleaning business to become literally like a surgical cleaning business instead of just being, it's a commercial cleaning company. Instead of it just being a, um, you know, let's clean your, your office and do a vacuum and a wipe down of the desks. Now we've had to become like a surgical cleaning. Our team are going in with all of the right chemicals, all of the right stuff. We're doing full deep cleans. We've, ha we've won so much business because of the pivot that we're again recruiting in that business. But, you know, two weeks ago, I was like, holy heck, are we going to survive this thing? What do we got to do? We're a commercial cleaning company. And, and, when, and, you know, all the gymnasiums that are shut, now every gym that's shut down, we're giving them massive cleaning. We're doing all of the things that we need to do. And we're winning new business. We're not losing business at this point. But it's survive first, thrive second. We had to get into survival mode in that business had to move everyone into, now we've got people that used to be uh, in our franchise department, they're now working in client acquisition and recruiting because we got to recruit cleaners, we got to recruit and train and how are we virtually training? So I get it that everyone's going to have to shift. We've been doing it and we've been doing it fast as we possibly can, but we look to where is where are people going to buy? What are they buying now? How are they buying different? That's in our industry or similar to our industry, but different. Um, the virtual stuff. Okay. Now virtual, the biggest problem for virtual is that social distancing, people are not feeling the, the, the level of fear that you've got to get rid of. And that's why we've gone to three huddles a day. Usually most of our companies run on a single huddle. We've gone to three huddles a day. Uh, small teams are running their, their huddles morning and night, evening. First huddle of the morning is what are you going to do today? And if everyone goes through what they're doing today. Second huddle of the day is an all hands huddle, which is really about what's going good for us as a team. Where are we succeeding? What's happening? And everyone on the team has to report in with what's good and what's going well. And everyone has to have their say and speak because we want everyone included to, so they're not feeling alone, so that they get a chance to be heard. They get that feeling of it. Social distancing is, is not human distancing, okay? It's just physical distancing. We got to make sure that the humans in our organization are there. Now, on a planning and reporting, we've always done it in all of our companies that everybody at the end of the day makes a list of what they've got to do the next day and reports that into their senior, uh, into their boss, their manager, okay? But now that's more important than ever. The daily plan at the end of every day, hand write a list of what you got to do tomorrow, what you're doing tomorrow, send it in. 
on Fridays, the handwritten list of what's got to be done next week. Handwrite it, take a photo of it, text it to your boss. Um, it's, it's not a complex thing, but it's vital in this virtual world to get uh, a management style that is fairly simple and fairly easy to do. So those daily lists and that weekly list and the daily reporting at the end of the day, everyone coming together and everyone reporting what they got done and what they achieved. These things are important to be, to be able to be done. Uh, cash flow management. You know, I, I, I'm still on the cost cutting. I'm still on the extend credit. And the reason I'm on cost cutting mostly is because most businesses were having their best year ever when it got to this thing, right? Most businesses were doing very well because the economy was doing so well. And, and when you're doing well, you get fat and happy. You haven't renegotiated your, your uh, telephone bill for the last however long. You haven't renegotiated those things. So get in and renegotiate all of those things. Uh, again, extend credit if possible. Make sure that your important suppliers and business partners are paid and paid first. Um, those ones that will keep your business running, get them paid and paid first because they're the most important. Um, every program available, be on it. You know, and I, and I have to say a little thing about my ego in here. I've never taken a handout in business and it took a little bit of, um, I feel my ego took a little bit of a beating the other day because applying for an SBA handout, loan, whatever. And my CFO turned to me and said to me, Brad, listen, the amount of money you pay in tax, you should get some of it back. So shut up. We're applying for this stuff. <laughs> it was just like, you know, put my ego in check and just apply for it. Don't worry. You know, don't get all bent out of shape that this is a, something I've never done. No, do it, do it and do it now. Um, OK, you got to sell your way through this thing. So let's look at marketing and let's spend a little bit of time on this one. How you do your marketing in this time is entirely different. I'm seeing companies still running the same old ads that they were running from before. It's not the way to do it. I just posted actually uh, last night a couple of examples uh, on my Facebook page of companies that are doing great advertising. And it's like, dang, if you take a look at um, the, these examples of companies that are just, they're just doing a phenomenal thing. Uh, Progressive was one of them. It was, it was a phenomenal ad. And uh, if, if you want to see it, make sure you're up there. Uh, they're on my uh, uh, Facebook uh, page, Bradley Sugars, uh, and take a look at it. But every message has got to shift because of coronavirus, COVID-19. Um, we've got to change the way we're marketing. There are more sensitivities today. There's more urgency to what we're doing with our marketing. If you don't find a way to make it urgent for people to buy now, they're not going to. You've got to be doing stuff that people will um, see as, and, and I know for me, a lot of our marketing has shifted. Like for, for us at Action Coach, we've shifted to simple marketing stuff that people are sharing where uh, it's, it's about helping business owners. So you know, one of the things that we posted was just our logo split in half, socially distant, but still here for every business owner that needs help. Another one was during this crisis, we're going to do five pro bono sessions with any business owner that needs help right now. You know, and we're posting these things that people are sharing. So uh, our marketing has gone far more um, viral because of the way we're doing it. And you need to shift your marketing into a methodology that allows people to want to share your message for them. You need to shift your marketing so that everyone is excited about what you're doing, so that they see you as helping, they see you as part of the solution to this, they see you as a part of the, the good guys, that sort of thing. There's gotta be that method that to everything you're doing. And, and even if some of the things like, we launched, uh, we were supposed to launch in about another six, seven days, the start of next month. In fact, the first of next month, we were launching uh, my new training program, 30X, which was going to be, uh, you know, it's 30 minutes a day for 30 days with me. It's, it's a very high priced item, but we did it for $99. We just put it out there for $99. And we've literally launched this afternoon a, uh, a, a, a what do you call it? Um, Jared, what's that thing we launched this afternoon? The 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 survive and thrive. No, the the um uh the the where everyone can sell the thing for us. I think the words oh, escape me. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. affiliate program. We're launching an affiliate program with it, where we give people fifty. We give people half the money. So once you buy it, if you get two other people to buy it, you've got your money back. Type thing. I mean, we're just doing crazy stuff 
that never in the in the daylight hours of normal business would we do, but it's a marketing that is getting shared. It's going viral because of it. Now, when I say virtual, if you've never been good at search engine optimization, if you've never been good at writing blog posts, if you've never been good at social media, dang, you better get good at it in the next 24 hours because Facebook advertising, Google advertising, when people can't go out, they can't see your billboard. Why not? They're not out there. The people aren't going to get the newspaper. Why not? They're not out there. They can't buy it. They're not going to buy the newspaper when they don't walk past the newspaper stand because they're just not out. So everything's got to go more virtual in your marketing. Everything's got to be done online. Your website's got to be able to take orders better than ever before. You've got to have that communication. You've got to have your phone numbers up on the website to have people able to connect with you as fast as possible. You know, not just a contact us form. I hate those things. You've got to have as many ways for people to communicate with you as possible. So make certain that that's what's doing. And, and this bottom point of know your numbers. Marketing is math. If, if the numbers work, it's great marketing. Uh, my book, which is called Buying Customers, teaches that where it's all about how marketing for every dollar out, you've got to get two dollars back or every 50 cents out, you get 80 cents back or every hundred dollars out. Uh, one of the campaigns Jared was showing me one the other day that we're running and it's for every 15 dollars, I think, or every 15 dollars, 70 out, we're getting a hundred dollars back. So you look at it and you think, okay, that's good. For 15 bucks out, we get $100 back. That's fantastic profitability. So let's keep doing that one. You know, it's virtual and viral. We got to know our numbers and got to make sure that we, we do it. Sales. And, and if you've got questions, start typing them in because in about 10, 15 minutes, I'll be able to take your questions and answer as much as I can. Your sales has to get to uh, real compassionate selling, empathetic selling right now. There has to be that if, if your sales is one of those hard charging methodologies, then, then it's not going to work in this, in this time frame. The sensitivities, you got to remember that whilst this is an economic crisis, this is actually really a human crisis. There are people dying. There are people in fear. There are people going through just normal everyday panic and worry. You know, the people that, 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 you don't know that person on the other end of the phone situation. So the level of empathy, the jokes that used to be funny are no longer funny anymore. The, the way that people are selling has had to shift. It's still sales though. You got to sell with purpose. You got to sell with passion, but you, you've got to be in that mode of putting your customer first and taking care of the customer is priority. It's, it just has to be that way. And I'm not even sure if it'll ever go back. You know, as, as we talked about this, uh, the, the infectious disease, as you said, you know, there could be another one tomorrow. It could be another one the day after that. You know, uh, China's trying to outlaw the, uh, they, they put a new law in that you can't eat wild animals, but let's, I don't know, there's still probably going to be another guy that's going to be crazy and eat a snake or a bat. And here we go. We're going to get another one. But the, the sensitivity to this is going to be, have to be at an all time high. Um, and every salesperson in your company needs to be given sensitivity training right now. I mean, it just has to be that way. We can't, we can't allow, um, you know, there's going to be, and, and you've seen this, some companies marketing right now, they're just getting beat up on this stuff. I'm watching them get beat up and it's like, dang, you guys, that's just not, you, you've got to change your marketing. You've got to change your sales approach right now because the market is different. People are sensitive to different things now. And so, as it changes, we're going to have to change with it and make sure that we've got, uh, you know, a whole team on that focus. Uh, time to build loyalty is right now. It's probably the simplest way I can look at it. If your existing customers are not feeling the, the love from you, if they're not feeling that, uh, hey, th these guys are actually doing a great job, these guys are caring, these guys and gals are doing uh, everything they can for me. They're going above and beyond. Now, one of the things that in a virtual world, um, who was it that wrote that book? Uh, Harry Beckwith wrote the great book called Selling the Invisible. And what he meant was that if in an invisible, when you're selling a service, when you're selling something as a service, you need to make the invisible visible. It needs to become tangible. That's why you know, if you're selling an intangible, you have great quality of, of brochures, the great quality of material that you send out. But now in a very virtual world, thinking of simple things like sending a gift to your customers. And these days, what's the most caring gift? Send them bottles of, uh, of uh, 
hand sanitizer. It's it's crazy that that's become the most caring gift there is, even to your staff, sending stuff out to each of your staff at home to make sure they're okay with this stuff. You know, when we sit and look at it, I I, I sit and look at the amount of care that there's, there's one particular family, I think in Kentucky, who two months ago decided to build a fort out of toilet paper. And they had literally tens of thousands of rolls of toilet paper to build this little building in their backyard out of toilet paper. Insane. But... Here they are giving them away to people. They're giving away one at a time to people that want to roll a toilet paper. They're getting, it's, it's like, wow, that family is getting more kudos and credibility for doing that simple little act of kindness. So what is it that you're doing that makes the invisible visible so that your acts of kindness are not just um, understood that they're happening, but they're seen, they're visible, it's, it's real, okay? It's like leadership right now. Leadership in the background right now doesn't count. Leadership out front, doing videos, being on the, being live, being on the front line. These companies that have sent out emails to their customer base without a nice video attached of the CEO of the company. You know, the CEO of the company is a human being and if they communicate like a human being, then all of a sudden the customers feel led, the staff feel led. Um, it's not about an email right now, it's about real leadership, it's about you know, communication, video, whatever it is you need to use to be able to get that stuff out there into the market. Um, step eight, first thing we have to do with our people is get rid of that mindset of fear. We need to get them focused. You need to give them something to focus on. It's like for me, every two weeks, I do this big webinar to all of our customers around the world and get thousands of people watching. We record it, we put it on YouTube, we share it again. But by giving them that, that uh, event that's happening, by doing the event, all of a sudden my people have something to focus on. There's no fear. There's something for them to focus in on. There's something for them to do. There's something for them to be a part of. And it's really important to give your people something to focus on right now, a goal, a, a thing, a, a, an event or something. Give them something somewhere to focus so that they're, they're not, you know, if people, uh, you know, don't look up at the stars, they're going to look down at their feet and they're going to, you know, see the pebbles and see the negatives. Keep them focused. Get the news off, you know. <laughs> don't have the news running at your office. That's the craziest thing I saw someone doing. New standards of, of performance, you know, and I, I, it's a great time to raise the standards in your organization and just say to people, listen, right now we have to be doing it at this level. There's no before we could achieve X, now we must achieve Y. We just need to do it so that we're here in a year's time, so that we're here in six months time. Um, that has to be the way that we've got to do it. Uh, it. There's no pivoting your people. We've gone into most of our companies and said, okay, where are our cost centers? Who are the people that are just costs in our company? All right, how do we pivot them and turn them into either cost savers or money makers for us. We've given uh, our salespeople, so some of the people who are doing administrative tasks that really, I mean, they need to be done, but right now they don't need to be done at this exact moment. So we've given them to the salespeople and said, right, you're now an assistant to this salesperson. Help them be on the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't let them do any paperwork. You do all of their paperwork for them. Let them stay on the phones. Let them be doing what they need to do. So we've had to train people in new things. We've had to give them education. We've had to, you know, pivot those people into a new job. And that's just what we're doing. Um, in all of our companies, we've said to the people that we're keeping as many of you as we can. We're trying to get through this. And again, if you do have to fire people, fire them all in one go. Do not drip fire people because then people get all panicked. Or am I next? And they start worrying rather than doing their job. You know, virtual... And remember this, people working virtually will work harder than they will at the office. Why? Because their computer's sitting there. They'll go down and do some work at 10 o'clock at night if they're bored. They'll go and do some stuff. So keep that and keep as many of them as you can because you're going to need them when we get through this thing. You're going to need those people. Now, mindset. This is one that I, I'm working with people on every day. What is your daily ritual of keeping fit and healthy? What's your daily ritual of getting your mind in order? What's your meditation or your thinking or your learning? And how are you getting your brain set for the day every single morning? You've got to be doing that because if you keep listening to the, all of the crisis pundits, if you keep watching all of that stuff, you're going to get sucked into it too. So opportunity and, and wins. We've got to celebrate every single win that we get every single day. Share it with your team. Share it in 
create a WhatsApp group or a Facebook group and uh, share it with everybody. Every single win that happens needs to be shared out there in the marketplace and turn that damn TV off. You know, maybe an hour a day or a half hour every two days, go and watch what's going on. But, you know, when all of your friends, I, I've the number of friends who have snoozed for 30 days on Facebook is it's like, damn, dude, all you're doing is sharing all the negative. You're out, you're out, snooze for 30 days. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not into the negative stuff. I'm looking for the opportunity in this. I have to. I'm the leader and people are following me. So I got to be the one looking for opportunity in every single thing that we've done here. You know, and, and you see it. I, I mentioned our food truck business, and uh, we've literally gone to doing family-style meals, not not doing the high expensive because, you know, one of our trucks is a barbecue food truck, and our barbecue is so spectacularly good. And it's not cheap. It's pretty expensive. But the way we've gone to this family-first meals, and uh, helping everyone feed their family during this crisis, if you can't get to the grocery store, we got your back, all of that type of marketing. But here's something that's amazing. When you stay strong and you stay positive, we had a guy who, uh, so we wanted to put the trucks in this particular parking lot. And we, we've, because now that we can't go to festivals, we need to be in parking lots and grocery store parking lots are huge for us. So a huge opportunity because they're busy. They're full of people and it's people trying to get food. We know that they're trying to get food. And so just magically the way the world works, you know, we started doing this great food on a Thursday. We started doing it. And on the Saturday, this one particular guy comes in and buys from us and he's feeding his entire family. He lives not far from us. He just happens to, uh, and three days later, we've gotten through survive mode and we're looking to thrive and get our trucks out there in different venues. And we call up this one particular chain of, of grocery stores and we said to them, listen, we got these food trucks. We'll be looking to put it in. We put our nice spiel through. And the guy on the other end of the phone said to my partner, Ryan, he said, hey, Ryan, it's me, Steve. You didn't recognize my number because you called me at work. But if you saw my cell phone number, you'd realize I'm one of your customers. I was there the other night on Saturday. You fed my family twice this week and you're doing an amazing job and I love your food. And we would never normally let food trucks in our parking lot. You know what? Well, I'm going to put you in our parking lots because I think that you guys are doing a great job and I really want to help people. And, and I appreciate what you're doing out there. You know, the world works in mysterious ways. When you stay positive and you stay strong, it's amazing what will come and what can happen for you. So stay positive, stay strong in this thing. Do what you need to do. Now, I'm stating this, and I've, I've, this is my best guess, okay? My best guess is we're in a 90-day holding pattern. We're in a 90-day game. We got to get through the next 90 days. You know, I, I love that the president is pushing that he wants us open in a matter of weeks, not months. You, show, you saw what that did to the stock market. You, I, I haven't even looked at my shares today, so I don't even know what's happening today. But the last few days have been amazing. We started buying in again on Monday. Monday was buy day for us. We started getting back in and we were cashed out sort of two weeks ago when the market hit. I, I'm, I'm a very big stop loss guy. So a 3% downturn and everything, we were out of every dang thing. We were cashed up when the markets were tumbling. And I was very, very happy about those stop losses and those automatic stop losses that we have in. But here I am, I'm buying back in because I see that this market is going to come back. You know, we're going to come back. Business is going to come back. Every hairdressing salon in the country is going to be busy as heck a week, two weeks, four weeks, however many weeks it is from now. We're not talking months anymore. We're talking weeks. So this to me is why I'm so positive. If you can see the difference from two weeks ago when we really didn't know what was going on. Now, if you're in New York, if you're in Washington State, you're not two weeks. You are two months from now, you know. So you got to be looking at what you can be doing, selling in other markets type thing. There are going to be certain states that are going to have longer periods of, of lockdown. Um, I'm here in Nevada, and we went to lockdown real quick. So I think our lockdown, our, our schools have already been told when they can go back to school after Easter is the is predicted date. So, you know, if schools are going back, we know businesses are going to go back before that. So, listen, 90 days is what we got to do. You've got to survive it first. And once you get survival handled, then get into thriving. Uh, if you don't have a business coach with my team, or, you know, you're with 12 Mavens, work together, solve these problems with each other. Um, mine, I, I was, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty buoyant in it. Um, I believe that companies will be up for sale your competitors will be up for sale some of your competitors will disappear which means their customers will be up for sale 
you're going to be out there. And if you're marketing and doing well and you're doing the right things in this, uh, I personally believe that the economic fall will be a matter of weeks, not years like it was in 2008. We're not talking months and years. We're talking weeks in this uh, in this cycle of negative employment. Uh, I, I, I firmly believe that the Trumpster will not let us be in a negative economic cycle come election day. I firmly believe he will push this thing into every single way to get us into a positive economic cycle come election. So we've got to be acting now. I believe that the economic winter, again, will be a matter of weeks, maybe months, but a matter of weeks or months before this thing turns. And yeah, I'm more positive than most people about this thing. I understand that. But listen, as every single time I see massive fear out there in the marketplace, I know that I've got to be the one with my head screwed on. I've got to be the one that's standing and thinking about this in a way that absolutely leads. So I'm going to move to questions uh, and take whatever questions you guys have. If you've got a specific business one, let me know. If you've got that, let me pull the questions thing out of the box here. Where the heck are the questions? Jared, I'm only a presenter. I'm not the host. So you may need to be either make me the host or, sh or just read me the questions, buddy. All right. Let me switch you over to host really quick. All righty, webcam on. See if you can see the questions now. If not, I can read them to you. Okay, let me take a quick look here. Green, there's a photo of my kids. There you go. Okay, <laughs> webcam can. All right, webcam is on. All right, let me see. Now I can see the questions. Yes, I can. Thank you very much, Jared. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Thanks. Some of you got some good long questions in here. Now I got to read them. Huh. Um, watching so many service-oriented businesses going away, going away, giving away a lot for free, which is good when necessary, but I don't want to just jump on that bandwagon just because it's trending. Can you offer thoughts on balancing the notion of giving and keeping on the business model? Listen, it, the the free of giving away has really become the marketing thing. So what you're giving away for free is more of a marketing thing for a lot of service companies. Like even for us doing the webinars for free, the, the webinar free is still designed for us to sell stuff from the back end. And I see some people out there getting, you know, it's crazy, but people are trying to make others feel guilty about selling in this time. No, I don't feel guilty at all selling in this time. I feel strong about it. I've got to support my business. I got to support the families that work for me. So I'm not feeling any guilt at all with it. So yeah, Kevin, make sure that you are still selling through this thing and keep charging people what you need to charge to make money on this thing. There's no two ways about that. Um, uh, it, it's got to be a part of what we're doing. Um, we don't have a huge customer base. Our products don't create recurring revenue solar. Should we spend more time creating relationship with old customers or generating more from new revenues? And Tony, I would be keeping looking at new revenues right now. You got to remember that people right now and, and spin yourself to the uh, to the industries or the, to the places where people, where the money is not really a problem, okay? Spin yourself to those and start looking for the places where there is money and there is this thing. You know, if we take a look at it, McDonald's, they're setting records everywhere, every single market. Every grocery store chain is setting records right now. You know, so we're, we're sitting back and looking at this sort of stuff and saying, where is the opportunity? Now, the other thing, Antonio, is this. You've got a sales force that's good at selling X. Are there other things that are recurring revenue that you could be selling to your past customers? Are there things that your past customers are all needing to buy based on right now? You know, I we, we sit there and we take a look. And if I didn't pivot our cleaning company, we would be down by about 40 percent. All the office closures, all of the gymnasium closures. All of the businesses that we normally do, if we didn't pivot, we'd be down by 40% at least at this point in time. So, you know, we've had to pivot and pivot strong and we're out there cleaning away and doing the things that we need to be doing to make sure um, we're picking up supermarkets where they want higher level cleaning than just the employees. They still have their guys and gals doing the sweeping the floors and dusting the shelves, but we come in and do the disinfect and all of that sort of stuff for them. So, it's it's you, some of the times you got to sell things you never sold before because your sales force is there and strong. Um, 
Oh, our, our business that we couldn't that we couldn't pivot restaurant it's the only one but that's only because it's in the the wind casino um, if that restaurant was somewhere else we would have pivoted it into take homes uh, we would have pivoted that restaurant into all sorts of things and i've seen some restaurants that have tried this and just failed at it because literally they can't that their, their marketing ability is just no good they didn't do any good marketing and so their viral marketing is, is just not happening it's non-existent and I look at them and they've gone to trying to do take home meals. And it's like, dang, you guys, your marketing is just not there. So make sure you get your marketing there to do that. Um, we're also very lucky in that we keep a database. And when I say lucky, we're smart that we keep a database of all of our customers' names and emails and addresses and stuff. Um, and, and so by having that, now we've increased every day. We're emailing what our menu is. Every day we're emailing what... Uh, our food of the day is and we're texting it out to people and we're social mediaing the heck out of it and we're getting all of our friends to share it on social media and stuff so um okay joshua i'm gonna get you to give me a little more detail um on your question there what actual industry and what are you selling that would be a thing joshua burnett I've, I've i've read your question but i haven't so if you can give me a little bit more info then that would be great um jeff do you want to just come back on for a sec grab your webcam and come back on for a sec yeah jerry do you need to flip me back over there you go and That's good this, so this has been on fire brad just so oh, you know uh, unbelievable really well, unbelievable. I'm, trying, I'm trying to get as much out as i possibly can oh so okay joshua you're trying to get into customers that you've never been into before in the private industry because you've been working government and government and, and, and not doing nothing right now other than trying to get money to all of us for freebies um and and of course you know most of you on this call are probably like me your means tested out of the government freebies so you got to get them on the business side of it okay um, I, I know for us, they're like, oh, this is great. We're going to give it to every family based on how many people in the family. And I've got like, I got five kids. This is brilliant. You know, best time ever to have five kids. I'm going to get five lots of handout. Nope, your means tested out, dude. <laughs> Dang it. Anyway, so we'll, we'll survive that thing. So Josh, what you got to be doing right now is looking to add value to those companies because every one of those companies in uh, IT right now are trying to go virtual and they're struggling with VPN setup, this setup, that setup. You need to become their resource. I would start doing videos on if you're going viral, here's how to do it. If you, sorry, if you're going virtual, here's how to do it. I would be educating all of those people, sending out stuff, connecting with them on LinkedIn and sending them information. Going virtual is tough. Here's the top 10 things to get virtual. If you need help with it, call us. If you need to get virtual today, call us, contact us. Everyone's going virtual and they need the help. You need to be on the phone with me. That sort of a message, I would be getting it out there to the market because every single time you, you add that value because look at where the market shifted. It's pivoted and it's got to be you pivoting with that marketplace. Make sure you are, make sure you're doing it. Okay. Woo. Um. Very simple. I'm going to finish off with, with one last point from me, gang, and that is this. This is the time when you see what you're made of. This is when the time you see what your people are made of. This is the time when you see what your community is made of. This is not a time to uh, distance yourself from communities, especially the 12 Mavens teams. This is a time to hunker down and help each other to the nth degree. This is a time to make sure that you're not attending. And, and I personally think that the meetings should go weekly from now on. This shouldn't be monthly. I think it should be weekly. Jeff, charge everyone four times as much and go weekly. <laughs> I'm serious. You need to be weekly, team. You need to get a shot in the arm from each other. You need to be on each other's back every, or help, or holding each other's back every week right now. This is not a time to distance yourself from your connections. It's not a time to distance yourself, or physically distance, yeah, okay, but not, but not to be distant. You need to be with each other weekly. You know, the more you can do it, the more often you can be chatting with each other, the more, because your mindset right now is, is something that 
it's the most important time to get your head out of your backside and be focused and positive and lead your charges, lead your team through this thing. You know, I can't help but tell you, if you are not getting your customers and, and your team saying, thank you, I trust you, I feel like you've got my back, I know you're leading me, I'm working more hours today than I've ever worked before. I literally have a makeshift studio. I, I, I have a full TV studio at my office, but we can't use that no more. So I've built a makeshift studio here in my home office and I'm recording and teaching. Uh, in two days time, I'm gonna release a 10, 10 videos, five hours of how to survive and thrive through COVID-19 for business. So when I get that out there, I'll get Jeff to send it to you all for free. But I want you to have one thing. If you take it for free on the condition that you share it with every business owner you know, I'm going to give it for free as long as you, you share it with every business owner you know and, and get it out there into the marketplace. Also, if you're looking for other things to sell, if you want to be a part of, uh, I'll let you know. In fact, I'll make sure Jared sends it to you or that Jeff sends it to you. If you've got a business database, we've got a program where, yeah, it's only 50 bucks because I'm only charging 99 bucks for it, but you can be an affiliate to our thing and we can help people make money through this. You know, we're trying to come up with ways to help every business owner make some money to get through this thing. Um, and in a couple of days, I'm going to get my CFO on to do a webinar on how to uh, apply for the government subsidies. We're applying for them in Australia. We're applying for them in the UK where our businesses are. We're applying for them here in the United States. We're applying for them in Canada. Every freaking government that I've ever paid taxes to has given me some back. There's no two ways about that. So, yeah, I used to have a bit of an ego about taking handouts. Now I have an ego the other way. Damn you guys. I gave you the money. You give it back to me now that I need some of it, you know. And maybe I'll never use any of the loan. Maybe I won't take a dime of it. But, hey, better to have it and not need it than not have it and need it. So, listen, yeah. you guys, take care. Stay strong. Wash your hands. <laughs> Don't touch your face. All that no. same stuff. But Thank you so I'm much. Not... Thank you so much, Brad. And I, I will say I've been in four of our group meetings in the last six days. And every one of them, my mind was in a totally different place at the end of that meeting than it was in the, the hour of CNN or whatever crap right right <laughs> before. That I'm right. telling you, man, it, it just yeah, yeah. It's the word it uh, mess your head up. You start thinking fearful, scarcity mindset uh, type thoughts. I, I was in these meetings and seeing how 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 businesses that were having the first their best first quarter of the year went to like everything on hold, every proposal on hold and the group coming up with outside perspectives, different ideas that they would have yeah. never thought of, how to go back to it, how to yeah. turn those I, around, I how to win them. got to be stopped running the meetings weekly. Start running them weekly, buddy. Or at least every two yeah. weeks or something, you know, because, and and have people double down right now because there's, there's a lot of people in the group that want this weekly. So go to your group and say, who wants this weekly now? You know, who wants and, to be on the weekly group? And I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of people, and especially the ones who are on this webinar that want to go weekly because, yes, I need weekly right now. And I'm willing to pay to go weekly because I need it. So and, anyway, and now the things I got to run, yeah. gang, because I got to get on another call. I have another one of my CEOs that I'm talking to next and just seeing how our pivot went on that business. Uh, he's he's based in that, uh, in uh, Melbourne, Australia. So. Uh, sorry, no, that's not him. He's he's this afternoon. He's this one's based in uh, the Dublin, Ireland. So I got to get on the phone to him and make sure that his pivot has worked and we're making money and we're at least surviving in that business. And then we'll turn our attention to thriving. So take care, everybody. I'm out. Uh, hope you all have a good time. Jeff, I'll leave you to finish out for everybody. I'll finish out. Thank you so much, Brad. Amazing. Um, guys, uh, after the last meeting I was at, I worked 19 hours in one day i haven't done that in a long time but just left so motivated thinking of the new ideas just like right now hopefully at the end of this you're starting to scribble out all the ideas what are the opportunities if, if this is a, an opportunity like we've never seen what can i do that we weren't doing before um uh, i've seen uh, having the, the outside perspective of all the ceos of all of our different groups i've seen some people uh, scurry frantically into a cave uh, and they're gonna struggle through these next 90 days. But I, I would uh, agree with Brad, now is the time for us to pull together to help each other. Um, so, you, so you're not uh, fearful and struggling on, on, on just trying to stay alive for the next nine days. You're getting through that part, rebuilding things. And then as he said, thriving 
um, by the end of the 90 days. Um, leverage the outside perspectives. Um, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of, out of today. Keep your head right. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're going to be lining these things up um, as often as we can with the top experts on getting funding, on thinking more resourcefully, on, uh, on remote teams, anything that we can do that's going to help you get through this and grow and come out better on the other side, we're going to do it. I'm all in. This is a passion. This is the obsession. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. Thank you so much. Um, reach out to me if there's anything I can do to help. Um, we're all uh, we're all uh, meeting virtually, so if you're not able to meet, make your meeting, it's probably really easy to pop you into one of the other groups uh, in one of the other cities, so you could still have a sounding board. You could still have um, other people to to get ideas from um, and to hold hold ourselves accountable to keep moving forward, keep moving forward. With that being said. Uh, have a great day. Stay strong and more details to come about Tuesday at 1030 coming up and I'll see you guys soon. Jeff wanted to let everyone know I have a couple of questions. People are asking if they can get a link to this recording and great. yes, we'll be sending you an email. Everyone that registered will get a copy of uh, this webinar as a recording later today. We'll also have it as a YouTube link so that you can then share it with your colleagues as well. Perfect. Great. I might go back and watch this thing myself after whatever breaking news tries to knock me off my spot. But uh, thank you for all your help and thank you guys for being here. And I uh, will see you on the next one.